We want the truth, so watch Truth Wanted live Fridays at 7 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash yttw and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash calltw. Everybody, welcome to the Atheist Experience. Uh, today is November twentieth, twenty twenty-two. I am your host, Forrest Valkai, uh, here live in the studio with my good friend Christy Powell. How are you doing today, man? Hey, great. Uh, glad to be here. Super excited for what we're going to do. Yeah, dude, this is an exciting day. Uh, before we begin, I want to let you know that the Atheist Experience is a, a product of the Atheist Community of Austin. It's a five hundred one c three nonprofit organization dedicated to the promotion of atheism, critical thinking, secular humanism, and the separation of religion and government. Uh, we got a great show for you today. We've already got several people calling in. Uh, I want to talk about things. Um, I do want to jump right into this one, if that's all right with you, because this is a, a kind of a hot topic right now, and we got two calls that are similar, and I want to try to squish them together. Yeah, let's hit it. So, to begin with, we are actually going to take a call from an atheist, which is usually not how we like to do things, but uh, we, we, we want to give priority to atheist calls, but this is important for today. Uh, we've got Damien, pronouns he, him, from Washington, wanting to talk, know how to talk about being an atheist with their religious family. Damien, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. And yourself? I'm fantastic, dude. So tell me a little bit about, like, particularly what you're talking about and, and, and you know, what you're going through. Like, why'd you call? Okay, first I want to thank you for taking my call. And second is I'm an atheist. Um, I grew up with my family being religious. A lot of people in my family still are religious. And when it comes to broaching the subject, like, for instance, at Thanksgiving, they all want to pray. I don't want to take part. Or like my mother, she keeps asking, can you just come to church with me and things like that? And I try to explain to them that I'm an atheist and whatever I do, they seem like I'm making an attack on them or in reality, they say things that I'm doing wrong and I feel like I'm being approached. I don't really have a good way to maybe try to help them understand my perspective where I'm coming from. Because I would never try to tell them not to believe in what they believe in. I just want them to understand why I feel the way I do. I can't help how I feel. Like, it would be a lot easier to believe in God and knowing that I'm not going to hell. Like, who would, who would choose that purposely? I can't help what I believe. So I was trying to find ways to help them understand or if you guys had to go through the same thing or experience you can that could help me out. Yeah, absolutely, man. I think the biggest thing to remember is that, like, when you're when you're talking about your family, uh, they they're coming from a position of love. They they do believe in these things, which you know I, I agree are atrocious, horrible things to believe in. But like, they believe it, and they don't want to see you hurt. They don't want to see you tortured. They don't want to see you lost. They want you to have the best, you know, whatever perpetual existence they believe in possible. So, try to. I would recommend first of all trying to approach the conversation with the same compassion that they perceive that they are coming to you with. Um, as much as I think, and I've said several times before, that saying things like Jesus loves you and things like that, I think those are horrible things to say. But to them, that's a very nice thing. It's trying to remind you that you have this eternity and, and all this. So like, I think you know, remembering that they're not necessarily trying to hurt you uh, and, and trying to come at them from that position, like, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make a connection, that's a huge, really important place to start. But also, don't let yourself then take that line of thinking and say, okay, well, then they can get away with anything. Like, you also have to have a boundary. You have to have compassion for yourself as well. And you have to be able to tell them, like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to give you as much leeway in the world here because I, I know you love me and I know I love you. But at the end of the day, I am who I am and you're going to have to learn to either love me for that or, or not. And that I'm not going to sit here and, you know, allow myself to be uncomfortable or abused or whatever, or ignored or looked over or whatever, uh, just for the sake of your, of your beliefs. Does that make sense? It does. And that's, that's very helpful. Cause that's 
kind of like it is. Like I say, like my mother, she keeps asking, I tell her, and they'll keep going, like, well, I'm just trying to save your soul. And things like yeah. that. It's like, you guys don't understand that you're being disrespectful towards me. There's only so much that I can take. Mm. Yeah. 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 When you try to frame this conversation around right and wrong, like what is and is not okay, you know, in their mind, like it's right for a child to go to church with their family. That feels natural. That feels normal. Obviously, for you, that's going to have a very different consequence, a very different meaning. And so I'd encourage you to kind of step away from, well, this is what we should do, and this is what's right, and this is what's fair, and instead frame this around your needs. You know, lots of people who have come out of religion can feel kind of triggered, frustrated, hurt, traumatized in a lot of ways by just simply walking into a church or hearing some of that Christianese, that Jesus loves you kind of stuff. And if that impacts you, it's okay to be vulnerable about that. You don't have to justify it or explain it or go into all this, you know, personal detail about your experience, depending on the conversation. But it is okay to say, no, 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 when you do this thing, you might think that you're having this impact, but you're actually doing something completely different to me. And me as an individual is just asking you to treat me differently, treat me in these ways that work for me rather than what you think is right or just or Christian or good. Yeah, and that's that's so important when talking about like uh, any any argument or disagreement between people who love each other is is you know we like to pretend that that somebody's going to win the argument in our mm-hmm. heads, but at the end of the day, if if you're saying I'm going to win this discussion, you are also simultaneously then saying this other person that I love is going to lose, and so like having that compassion and and, and saying like you know I. I understand that you don't want to hurt me. I need you to understand that I don't want to hurt you. These are things that we are almost certainly never going to see eye to eye on. However, from our t- like there there is a way to do this where both of our frameworks are respected. If they really want you to come to church, then they need to understand the amount of stress and pain and discomfort that that would cause you. And if they still want you to come to church after all that, maybe that's something for them to think about. You know, if I tell my wife, I really want you to get a tattoo, it would be so great for me. I I would love for you to get a tattoo. And she's like, I don't want to be in pain. I'm allergic to the ink. That makes me uncomfortable. I don't ever want to do that. That's the rest of my life. Then for me to continue pushing would kind of make me a jerk, right? And so... For you to say, hey, I'm going to have this response to this thing, I, it, when I hear this, like, like like Christy was saying, you know, this is a very upsetting thing for me. This is something that I really don't want to feel comfortable with, I don't like. For you to continue pushing on me now, you're telling me that my comfort matters less than yours. Mm-hmm. And that's not how, you know, people who love each other should act. Uh, and also, like, on top of that, the reason why I won't participate in, like, group prayer or something like that, even if I, if someone invites me to their home or if I'm in a church or if I'm at, you know, a dinner or whatever with people who believe in these things, if they want to say grace or whatever, I'm certainly not going to stop them. I'm not going to talk over them or anything like that, but I'm not going to participate. And it's, number one, because, you know, I have to think about my comfort as well. That would, I find this concept to be really hateful and I don't want to be a part of it. And also, how shitty of me to put myself into their thing that's very sacred to them, knowing that I'm do- I don't want to be a part of it. That seems to me like I would be sullying their thing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So there's a few reasons that, that, that you shouldn't be involved. And I don't think any of those have to be overly confrontational. Um, it, it can all come from a position of compassion, just so long as they're willing to meet you in the middle. You know what I mean? I do. And I won't take up no more of you guys' time. Forrest, Christy, I watch you guys all the time. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Uh, this is very helpful. You know, going through these things and trying to work on things. I worked on my mental health. I finally went to see a therapist and I got some medication. You know, I was worried about the stigma of that. So there's things in my life that I'm trying to get better for me. And part of this can be helpful with this talking to my family because that's one of the things that makes me not want to be around them. Yeah, no, I totally understand. And first of all, congratulations on, on going to therapy and getting the medication, the help that you need. That's immensely important. And you're right. There is a, a stigma around it, which is stupid. It's, it's, it's like having a stigma around cancer. Go go get the help that you need, bro. Like that's that's right. so. Congratulations and, and good on you for for having the cojones to take that step. And uh, yeah, man, it's it, there. There's a lot of people who just go full no contact with their family because it just doesn't work out. And there's a lot of people who are able to find the middle ground and bridge that gap. So for you to have the uh, you know the, the the emotional awareness and the will and the drive and everything to bridge that gap and to talk to them about it, as painful as a conversation as you know it could be for both parties. I think that alone, hopefully, should show 
some serious commitment on your part and, and, and some, some, you know, real resolve to, to be a, an active member of the family, you know? Right. Uh, so like I said, I don't want to say this again. I don't want to note too much more your time. I don't want to fanboy because I feel like it's awesome talking to you both. I see you all the time <laughs> on YouTube, so it's like I know you. <laughs> hey, we appreciate it. Yeah, and, thank you so much. Uh, I, I want to just add to that list of things that you've been doing for yourself and taking care of yourself, reaching out to your community. You know, there are other atheists who are going through these exact same problems. So thank you for sharing your experience with us. And best of luck. Being in community is a, a powerful part of, uh, of handling these kind of situations. So during the holidays and everything else, reach out where you need to. Uh, well, you guys have a great day, and I can turn you guys back up now. Thank hey, you so much, care. Damien. You're awesome. Thanks so much for being here today. Uh, before we move on, because we've got a bunch of really good calls that I want to get into, yeah, huh. uh, and I've got one here that actually I think this would build off pretty nicely, uh, but we'll, we'll get it on. But before we move on from there, I wanted to let you guys know that... Uh, you can support us uh, by becoming a member for as little as 99 cents a month. You just click the join button down below the video, and that'll give you access to special chat emojis. If you're in the chat right now, make sure to use some of those emojis so people can see just how shiny and beautiful they are. Um, also, I want to let you know that The Atheist Experience is just one of the many shows that are being put on by the ACA. So make sure to uh, check out some of the other shows. Uh, on Let's see, we've got Secular Sexuality, where you can see this guy on Thursday starting at 7 p.m. Central. We've got Truth Wanted, which airs on Fridays uh, just before... Uh, no, sorry. At 7 p.m. Then we've got uh, the Sunday shows, which is this is one of them. We've got Talk Heathen, which is at 1 p.m. Central. Then the Nonprofits is right before this one at 3 p.m. Central. And then you can watch this all the time. Always watch this. Um, and also, you can support us at Patreon. Just go to tiny.cc slash Patreon AXP, and you can become a, a, a patron person. You can, like, support us there, too. It would be really cool. Uh, with that, I'm going to jump over to, let's see here. Where are you? Uh, well, it looks like that person actually hung Lost up. Which like, oh, here we go. We'll go for uh, this guy right here. This is Jay from Iowa who wants to talk about uh, why is it so important for an atheist to be telling people that God isn't real? Jay, how are you? Pretty good. How about you? I'm fantastic, man. So th that's the question that I've got here on the screen. It says, you know, why is it so important for an atheist to be telling people that God isn't real? Is that a fair summary of what you were calling about, or do you want to elaborate a little bit more on it? Yeah, no, well, I mean, yeah, that was the general question. Okay, cool. Um, I think, like, a, a part of it is, is you know, some of the stuff that, that we just talked about is that this is something that we want to uh, make more common and, and, and just kind of remove stigma from. Uh, it shouldn't have to be a difficult, painful thing for an atheist to sort of, you know, come out to their family. Um, uh, so just a, a big part of, of what we do here is just exposure and letting people know that they're not alone and that it's okay and that we can talk. Also, you know, if you talk to every individual atheist, they're probably going to give you a different answer every time. But if you ask me in particular why I do shows like this, uh, it's because I also am what's called an anti-theist. So I think that the, uh, the gods on offer, the idea of a god at all, especially the Christian god, which is, you know, well, I grew up in Oklahoma, so that's what's around me all the time. Um, that sounds horrible. It's, it sounds really unpleasant and really awful. And I think, as I said in the last call, when you say things like Jesus loves you and things like that, these things I see on billboards all around me, I think those are really hateful, mean statements. So uh, I'm not going door to door, knocking and, and telling people God isn't real. I'm not building a church. I don't have a televangelism thing. We have a call-in show on, on the YouTubes right. that people can call if they want to. Um, but like, it's, so it's, it's, it's not important for me to go and like tell everybody and like shake them by the collar and say God isn't real, but I am very, very happy to spread the message where I can and to try to help people understand to, you know, what we don't believe in and why we don't believe it. Okay, well, I have a question um, on what you said. Yeah. Uh, you said something about something being hateful, that uh, Jesus loves you is hateful? Yeah, absolutely. How so? Uh, so, uh, basically, I'm, I, I want to give you, so I want to talk over it too. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, when this is perfect, like about what we were just talking with these other, the other person is that, you know, when a Christian person says that God loves you, Jesus loves you, whatever things like this, they almost certainly hear that as a very kind, inclusive, generous, loving thing to tell you that you're welcomed and you're, you're, you're loved and how wonderful. But, you know, I'm hearing this from the outside looking in. I'm looking at the whole philosophy, the whole, whole you know, the whole shebang. It's not just about love. The whole dogma here is that we are inherently sinful people, that we uh, cannot possibly 
be good. We are irredeemably just sinful, wicked, evil, broken, diseased, whatever. And the only way for us to get into heaven, to live with, you know, paradise and all those things, is by being forgiven, by, by, by being Christian, by believing, by confessing, by you know, all these things. And otherwise, without that, we go to hell, an eternity of, par- uh, of torture, of, of conscious anguish and pain in a lake of fire. And this is heaped upon the, the, also the assumption that God, the ruler of the universe that controls everything, nothing happens without his, his, his okay, um, and it is always a his, isn't that fun, um, that this God uh, designed the universe this way on purpose, and that he is all just, that what he does is the right thing to do all the time. And so what you're telling me when you, when you tell me that Jesus loves me, you're saying half of it. You're not saying Jesus loves you, period. You're saying Jesus loves you so much that if you don't love him back, he is going to torture you in hell for all eternity because you are so disgusting and evil and wicked and broken that that is the only good thing to have that could possibly happen to you. It would be morally right if you were tortured forever, but he loves you, and so it doesn't Jesus have to loves be. you or else. Exactly. So it's a threat. It's a twisted mockery of love. Um, it's an insult. It's a, it's a really, really mean and uh, you know, hurtful thing to say to somebody, especially if they don't believe. Well, I guess that uh, we all have our crazy beliefs, atheists and theists. I mean, you guys have the woke stuff, and we have Jesus. What's the difference? What's, what's, I mean, we can debate, like, where those beliefs come from and what the value of them are. I mean, in a lot of ways, that's what Forrest and I are here to do. Yeah. But it's worth acknowledging that, yes, okay, you have your beliefs. These other people, these atheists, they keep trying to, like, push this narrative of God is dead or never existed on you. You know, sure, we have different values and different beliefs. But what you're maybe not recognizing here is something we talked about with the last caller, which is just that the Christian culture culture is so prevalent and so everywhere that it feels oftentimes like Christians don't recognize how they're received by the rest of the world. You know, atheists are in this sort of weird position where for, you know, a lot of good reasons, atheism doesn't like being lumped in as like another religion. You go to the bookstore and you find, you know, Dawkins and Hitchens and like the religious section feels a little strange, but on the outside, you also have to recognize that this is a completely different belief system with a different set of values, and a lot of that stuff that you may take for granted as normal, everyday, Jesus loves you kind of stuff really doesn't ring that way. Well, I find, uh, like, your stuff more strange or repulsive, I could say. Sure, but we're not, quote, like playing our stuff at every grocery store during the holiday season or forcing cashiers to acknowledge our stuff. We can, again, debate like the quality and value of our different stuff. But I guess I'm just asking you to empathize for a moment with the idea that you are not part of the dominant culture and what that must feel like. I've, I've never had a flyer saying God isn't real and you should enjoy your life for what it is left under my windshield wiper at yeah. Walmart. I have had flyers saying you deserve to go to hell. Here's why. Here's a poorly yeah. drawn comic of it. Yeah, exactly. I've had that several times. So, like, you see how that's kind of different. Uh, what's normal here, you know? Well, I mean, I lived in Portland and I had the abortion flyers in my car all the time. Pro- right. But like you have to understand, like this is the second time that you've t- you talked about you said the word woke, which I don't know. That's a whole other rabbit hole. But like and I talk about abortion. You realize atheism is just <laughs> simply atheism is just the simple one position that we don't believe in a God. There are plenty of atheists that are like conservative Christian or conservative Republicans. I almost said conservative Christians. That'd be uh-huh. weird. But like, there are plenty of atheists that are conservative Republicans. There are plenty of atheists that are as far left as you can possibly be, and everywhere in between. Atheism is just saying that we don't believe in a god. So, like, yeah, I'm. I am ex- to call me left leaning would be like calling the Civil War a disagreement. I am very, very left, but like that has nothing to do with my atheism, and I'm certainly not, you know, pushing an agenda or anything by being here saying that I have no reason to believe in your god. All you guys push an agenda. Who, I mean, all, sure. All we're, yeah, we're here as part of a 501c3 educational organization. So we're here to teach people things, to educate people on things. Like we have an agenda. It's about separating church from state. It's, mm-hmm. it's about all of these important things. So, yeah, 
You, that's not like a get out of the conversation free card to just say <laughs> someone's pushing an agenda. You can't label every flyer for every idea that you don't like as being atheism and an affront on my religion. Mm -hmm. your, your religion isn't being okay. confronted. Some of your ideas might be challenged, okay. but that's what a flyer is for. Right. Right. It's to give you information about a thing. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, our generally our atheists left-leaning and then if they're left-leaning woke i've so I'm, that. I'm sorry i'm I, not I, even I, touching that woke well, but i have a hundred feet away I, i'm dying to know like what it actually is but like I, <laughs> the thing is there are well, trends in this area that you can track statistically generally speaking uh uh atheists tend like as as people increase in in education they tend towards atheism, uh, but that isn't always true depending on the field. Like, it depends on if you're in the sciences or if you're in philosophy or whatever like that. So it's not fair to say atheists tend to be more educated. That's kind of bullshit. Um, also, atheism, uh, uh, atheists do tend to be left-leaning, but again, that kind of depends on what you're going with and what you're defining it as. What we call the left here in America is, like, just right of center for the rest of the world. So, like, it, it's, you know, it really depends. The, on, like I said a minute ago, the only thing you can say about atheists that's uniformly true is that they don't believe in a god. And generally that they're woke, where you believe that men are women and women are men. I, I, I don't believe that, and that's not a good like generalization of, I'm assuming you're talking about trans people, that's a crappy, like weird way to describe what that is. Super that, lazy punching bag. I like I don't mean to be confrontational about is. it, but please don't do that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I, I hope you know just how absurd that is. That would be like me saying that you as a Christian believe in a, a, a Jewish zombie that'll burn my soul. Like that's kind of a silly thing to say, right? So like, I'm not, I, I have yet to give you a straw man argument of your position. Please don't, uh, you know, straw man an entire group of people. I don't know what you guys believe. It's very not, and we're sitting here telling you it's not. So either you think you know what's going on inside our minds better than we do, or you're wrong. Well, I, past shows, I've seen your past shows and where you describe, you're a biologist that denies biology. I am not. I am a biologist that follows the evidence. Yes. So are you talking about the difference between sex and gender? Yes. No, I, yeah, I mean, however you want to call it. Yeah, sex and gender are different things. The, see, that's, that's the one thing. One of them's a biological construct, call, one's a social construct. Yeah, I mean, when you that's call him just, a biologist oh, who oh, refutes oh. biology, you have to stop and ask yourself, well, what is my understanding of biology and where does it come from? Right, like when we say sex and gender uh, are different things, that's like introductory conversation to a million different fields. It's important that you understand these fields before you come in and try and say, well, this is this and that is that. I'm not saying you can just listen to somebody because they have a degree, but maybe you should at least listen. You know, hear it out a little bit. Follow the evidence because, as Forrest is pointing out, the evidence clearly leans in that direction. Mm -hmm. uh, before we wrap up, did, did you have anything else that you can maybe put a bow on it for us? Because it feels like we're getting into some name-calling-ish kind of territory. No, I'll ask a simple question, a, a simple yes or no question. Uh -huh. I mean, that's all it is. Um, can a biological male impregnate a, a male that identifies as a woman? Is, is not, why not? I is guess. the only thing that matters about gender and sex, you know, pr uh, reproduction? I mean, I'm just still hung up on the term biological male. We yeah, know that that's a, that's a squishy, messy, bullshit concept to begin with. You don't know what a biological male is? No, of no and I'm going to express that a... perhaps you don't either, <laughs> which is why I would really encourage you to go to the evidence. Like, you're, you're talking to folks who have, you know, kind of particularly dug into this sort of thing, and you don't have to believe what I believe or agree with what I agree with, but, like, maybe read some of the books that I'm reading, right? Or at least some books on some of these concepts. This is why I'm questioning you guys. This is it. because I've seen the videos and then I've seen the the reviews that uh, the the papers that you guys want me to look at, but it still doesn't convince me. So this is why I'm calling you. I mean, we all have our beliefs. That's fine. You guys don't respect what I believe. I'm I'm not talking about beliefs. I'm yeah. talking about understanding. That's the thing. I I I, I don't <laughs> care if you're convinced or not. That's the scientific consensus. Like that's the thing. Is like you can look at 
any introductory anthropology textbook, any introductory genetics textbook. You can look at like the the freaking dictionary. <laughs> like you can, I mean, you can psychology look at the world. 101 is going to have a chapter psychology on gender versus cover sexuality. It. The World Health Organization, the American Medical Association have like detailed publications about it. I don't care if you're convinced or not. The leading science in the world points in this direction. So like that's what we're gonna go with. That's my, as a biologist, my job is to study and understand biology. If you don't like where biology points, it doesn't matter to me. I have plenty of people who call in and say evolution isn't real. It doesn't matter to me because as a biologist, I study it and I understand it. Like that's the end of the conversation for me. It's, it, it, it doesn't matter. Do you know what a male is in a species? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. It, we're again, we're back to the very first chapter, and I, I'm not trying to disagree with you. I'm trying to maybe explain to you or, or just urge you to find some understanding here. Here's where here. your woke stuff comes into place. Here's where your woke stuff comes into place. So you know the biology of how things work, but then you deny biology when it comes to all this gender stuff. Did you hear what I just said a minute ago about how gender and sex are different things? They're different things. So why do you categorize them as the same thing? I didn't. I never have. You guys do. Um, biological males competing with females. You guys say that. I'm, I'm glad that you think that sports are so important that you're willing to deny people like human rights and dignity, but I do not. So, like, if we have a system that kind of sucks, then maybe we should just change the system, right, and not treat people like trash. Did you not, did, did you not see... The female that just got beat in the volleyball game by a male, how he spiked the ball and just beat the shit out of her? Yeah, well, I'm going to just... I'm actually not caught up on the particulars of competitive volleyball. Yeah, and I would not... wonder why the hell you are if it wasn't to, <laughs> quote, push an agenda. I like, also am curious to know, like, what you've thought about trans being in, uh, trans people being in the, in the sports for the past 20 years that trans people have been allowed in the Olympics. And now all of a sudden you can point to one instance in which a trans person won a thing, and now you're real mad. <laughs> many, many, many. It's not one. I mean, you can be deceptive. It's not one. It's many. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure that that's. Oh man. So there's <laughs> the law of big numbers. I, yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're pretty far afield here. Uh, I guess just to say, I I can hear the the urgency behind some of your positions i i really want to take them seriously and there are good-natured conversations to be had about what is what and how do we draw these lines how do we understand these very complex ideas i'm just gonna very kindly urge you once again not to believe these ideas but to work towards understanding them because mm -hmm. if you can understand it and tell me it's bullshit you'll be able to tell me why it's bullshit without gra grabbing like random news headlines and calling everybody woke. So th I guess that's the, the kind of final word for me. I hope that you'll think through some of this stuff, put your thoughts together, maybe give us another try. Yeah. Oh my God. You guys just don't like truth. <laughs> it's, it's as <laughs> soon as you bring me some, I will let you know how I feel about it. Absolutely, man. Well, you have a fun day. You sound like you're a delightful person. I'm going to move on to the next call, uh, but thank you so much, Jay. Uh, I, I, some of you may be wondering what I've been doing here uh, on the computer. I've been looking for a book uh, to try to, like, give, like, a little bit of example. Uh, uh, Genetics, a Conceptual Approach, 6th edition is the one that I used when I was in college. It's got uh, some great stuff on gender and sex and how they're different and, you know, different ways in which, you know, sex determination works and how it's not nearly as reductionist as, as people like to pretend. Unfortunately, my computer over here is being unbelievably slow, but I encourage you to check that out. It's a, a fascinating, it's a great textbook, and it's got a great chapter all on this. Also, um, there's one called Anthropology, What It Means to Be Human. Uh, it's from Oxford University Press. I can't remember the author off the top of my head. If I was at my office at home, I'd be able to grab both of these from the shelf behind me. But um, if, if I can find it sometime during the show, I'll pull that up and, and we'll be able to talk about it. Um, unfortunately, like, oh my God, this thing is chugging. <laughs> it's having a hard time. Um, before we move on, I did want to uh, give you this announcement, if I can pull it up there. 
Um, hey, if you shop on Amazon, uh, then you can actually support the ACA at no cost to you. Simply visit tiny.cc slash Amazon Smile ACA uh, and designate the Atheist Community of Austin as your selected charity, and Amazon will donate a portion of their profit directly to the ACA. We also now have a channel that hosts all of the shows of the ACA in audio podcast form. How exciting is that? You can listen to us without having to see our horrible faces. <laughs> um, visit uh, tiny.cc AEN podcasts, uh, and there you can listen to all of the latest shows from the Atheist experience, talk heathen, truth wanted, uh, secular sexuality, and the nonprofits, and uh, they're all together on one channel. We also have three different Facebook groups, which are all run by fans for fans, and you can interact with them. The first is the Atheist Experience fan group. That's at tiny.cc slash FBAXP. There's also the Atheist Experience private fan group where you can interact with others without having those interactions appear on your public feed. So if you don't want everybody to know what you're talking about, like, you know, the first caller kind of a little bit trepidatious about maybe getting that out there to the public, that's fine. And then we have a new group called the Atheist Experience fan group, Atheist versus Theist Debates, where you can try out some of your best arguments on theists and atheists alike. And you can find that at tiny.cc slash, a, uh, slash AXP fan debates. Uh, it's, it's all there on, on the interwebs. With that, I'm going to bop over here to this thing here. Mm -hmm. And Looking we've got it. a few. This is a really fun looking one. Um, this is, uh, does that sound good to you? Yeah, let's do it. All this right. is Bear. Personal proof. Yep. Bear from Washington. Uh, pronouns are he, him. Says he's a new believer. Uh, with very strong in your faith, uh, and you say you have proof in your life. What other proof could people possibly need? How are you doing today, Bear? Um, I'm very well, thank you very much. Awesome. So you said you have uh, strong proof in your life, and what other proof could possibly need, people possibly need? Would you mind giving me a little bit of details on on what that proof is? Well, you know, um, I was baptized Catholic and maybe went to church probably, you know, 15, 20 times in my entire life. Um, and now I'm 56 years old. Um, got a very successful career, but basically my life just kind of fell apart. Mm -hmm. And I was using drugs, um, very promiscuous very uh, centered around myself and greed and hey, bear? everything. And then, um, bear? yes, I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm going to ask you this sincerely. I'm not trying to be a jerk and cut you off. I just genuinely want to ask, is your story about to be, I was at this horrible low point in my life. I was doing all these evil, sinful things. And then I found God. And then my life turned around and all these wonderful things happened to me. And now the more I look for God, the more I find him everywhere I am. Is that what you're about to tell me? Uh, that's part of it. Okay, because that's what we get a lot. So, like, I just want, if we can skip through that, like I said, I'm not trying to be rude to you. If there's a part in there that's really significant and you want to tell us, that's fine. But that story is so frequent that, like, we hear it. So if there's something else beyond that that you want to give us, awesome. If not, we can talk about that. Okay, okay. So so a lot of people have this experience. Oh, yeah. So, you know, we talk about, we, we talk about people, and I've listened to you guys quite a bit, and in my own faith journey, because, you know, how can, how can any of this be true? And it, you know, it's faith and it's doubt. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've experienced a lot of faith and I've also experienced a lot of doubt because, you know, there's the big question of evil. There, there are all these other things that happen as well. You know, I've had the evidence in my life. It sounds like a lot of you who have been on here have had, you know, experiences with the church before and have left the church. Now, I'm new in it. I, I had my evidence. But, you know, what is the evidence? You know, what kind of evidence would it take for people who have left the church to come back to it, do you think? And what evidence did you find that actually made you lose your faith? You want to go first? Yeah, no, there's a, a lot of moving pieces there. Uh, as far as evidence for atheism, I guess, like what, what experience led most of us to leave? I mean, everybody's going to have their own story, their own experience, but really it comes back to the question of, of lack of evidence. Right? It's much harder to prove a ridiculous claim like, hey, there is this immortal person in the sky who runs every aspect of your life, but you can't see him. But when good things happen, you need to thank him. But when bad things happen, that wasn't him. That was probably your fault because you weren't doing what he said to do. And then there's no way to prove any of this. So it's just like this internal operating system that you're seeing the entire world through 
that kind of needs some evidence. That's the type of thing that you start to feel really weird about and you start asking those questions. So, you know, I think every atheist or really every person who has left a religion, oftentimes that is a challenging and traumatic experience. So people are going to have their own personal stories and the experiences for them that help them to motivate and change and see through some of the shame and guilt and other things that might cloud up their thinking. But really, it, it just comes down to because there is no evidence for God. Yeah, I, I think that's, uh, like, I was never Christian by any means, but I was, like, sort of quasi half ass spiritual for a little while, and uh, the, I think the thing that really did it for me, the thing that changed my mind and, and, and caused me to drop all of that uh, was that I just realized that I had a completely different set of rules, uh, logical rules and moral rules for thinking about that than I did for literally anything else. Mm. So, like... Yeah, I, I, I've you know been a big fan of science my whole life. It's why I got into it as a, as a, a, a academic study and as a career. Um, I had a completely different way of judging evidence and of demanding evidence for things like, say, the speed of light or, or what a black hole is or how evolution works or any other thing than I did when I talked about ghosts because I believed in spirits for a long time, and I believed in, you know, uh, uh, you could draw a circle on the ground and burn some certain herbs, and you would have good luck all week, and I had a totally different way of thinking about that. And as soon as I applied the same logical and moral rules that I apply to anything else ever to these things, they, they fell apart. Hmm. Well, that's interesting, and and I, I thank you very much for your your observations and what you think there. And I'm probably going to piss off a lot of Christians by by saying this too, because I don't. We I, do that every day. We're up there, but I don't think because all the good things happen to me, uh. it's because of God. And when the bad things happen to me, it's because of the devil, or that I didn't didn't do something God wanted. I think God is in charge of both. I think he sends out the bad things as well. Right. So th this is something we've heard a lot. And, and I guess uh, what I would ask you is, um, well, two things, actually. Um, pursuant to, to what I was just talking about with, with the same rules, would you, like, accept it if, 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 you know, if I was telling you that I believe in a different God than yours, one that's, like, wholly incompatible, if I told you that I believe that Christy here was was actually God and he was in control of my life and all these things, um, and, and you can actually see him too, uh, would that be, you know, if I gave you the exact same story and the exact same reasoning that you've presented to us or that you were going to before I cut you off, like it's a, would that be good enough for you? Would it be convincing for you? And would you think that I had a good reason to be convinced? Well, ironically, I would ask for proof too. Yeah, I mean, I, I can, in the same way that you've pointed to your own life, like I could point to people I've worked with as a therapist who maybe uh, changed their relationship with alcohol and other drugs, who maybe, you know, got their family life in order because of our work together. Like I have I have miracles that I can show you. So why why is that standard of proof different than your religious experience? No, I, I, I see your point. I'm a very logical person and. And that's why, you know, I'm, I'm reaching out because I, I want to know. I, I, if I'm going to believe in this faith, I want to be sure about what I'm believing in. Right. Sure. And, yeah. And, you know, I want to explore every avenue because, you know, it's, it's like they say, this, this pink cloud or whatever it is that, that I'm on right now, you know, what if, what if it fades? And then, and then, you know, a lot of people who have found God and then something bad happens to them. They turn around and turn away and they're worse than they ever were before. So I want more concrete examples about, you know, you know, they talk about what is a Christian apologetics, right? So what are what are some atheist apologetics? Because I want to <laughs> I want to explore both sides of the argument. And yeah. and and thank you guys for going on this journey with me because yeah. I'm not going to just, you know, take a take a leap of faith and jump into a well without knowing what's down there. Yeah, no, you've, you've been a delight. Thank you so much for, for calling. And like, so I, as I said in another call, is that like, you know, the only thing that we can say for sure about all atheists is that they don't believe in God. So like, to, to call it apologetic, I know you're being funny, but like, it's, I would say the only thing that I could point to that like we would say is that I don't have a reason to believe in it. There's no evidence for it. So like, you know, the, the, the way that I usually phrase it is like, you know, right behind this wall here where this TV is, there's an elephant standing there. You have three options now. You can say, I believe you, 
I don't believe you or no, there is. Like you can say, yes, there is. No, there isn't. Or I don't believe you. I guess is a better way to phrase that. Um, if you say, yes, there is or no, there isn't, you need proof. You have to have evidence to back up that claim. But if you just say, I don't believe you, you're not saying there is no elephant. You're waiting for me to prove that there is. You're saying, I don't have a reason to think that that's true. It's, it's a pretty absurd claim. If I tell you that I went out for pizza last night, you have no reason to think that isn't true. You don't really need evidence for that claim. But like an elephant behind this TV is pretty crazy. So like that's where we're at with God is if, if you told me, you know, that you, you watched a cool new show on Netflix, radical. I'm not going to ask you to prove that you have a Netflix account and all these other things. But if you tell me that there's a, you know, for better or worse, you know, for, for lack of a better term, an invisible man in the sky who's controlling, you know, what the weather looks like and, and who gets pregnant and, and all these things, I'm going to need a fair bit more than I had a good feeling one time or it, it, it made me a better person because those same claims are used for every other religion and also for lack of religion sometimes. No, I, I understand. I used to laugh in the face of people who used to talk about their big sky daddy. Mm -hmm. It's just like, it wasn't for me. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but again, it's, life can be objective and subjective. So just uh, one quick question before we finish here is, if you would give me one resource to look into, one resource of someone who would challenge me on both sides of the fence, mm -hmm. who would that be? Who, who would you recommend for me to explore this journey that I'm on with. Oh, I've got a few. Do you want to? Mm, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. This is out of left field, but I, I might recommend uh, Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. That's good. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, you may have something to say about it. I know that that book can be maybe a little bit uh, aggressive in some of the claims that it makes or some of the oversimplification, but that's sort of what I like about it. That's what I'm looking for because that book manages to take kind of all of human history and give you this 10,000 foot view. It's not directly about religion. It's not going to try and convince you of any particular narrative, but I think when you see the way that he he crafts a, I don't know, an understanding or a narrative of human history, you will start to understand how religion plays into that and, and maybe how it doesn't, even though that's not necessarily the way we'd like to be thinking about it. Yeah, that's a good one. And as far as like, like I, can, I can give you a million books on like... Secular Jew. Oh. Sorry? Oh, excuse me. No, no, I, I said he's a sex, secular Jew from Israel, correct? I think he might be. I'm not super familiar with his bio. Yeah, I'm not either. But like, I, I, I do. I've heard a million good things about the book. I've yet to read it myself. Um, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. Um, it's, I, I could give you a long list of like cool biology books, especially like you know uh, bioanthropology books. But if you're looking for just debating like whether God claims are useful, um, I'm a huge fan of Christopher Hitchens. Man, he was he was you know, a, a big hero of mine for a long time. Um, fair warning when you're watching him, he's known for not being super nice. And there are a few times that even I was like, he's kind of a dick at this moment. But, you know, when you handle the same argument 50 billion times, I guess you get that way. But um, I, I love his, uh, his anti-theism. I, I can be a dick too. I can be a dick too. That's fine. Uh, yeah, exactly. Who among yeah. us? Who so, among us? So like, yeah, he's, yeah, I love his, uh, his anti-theist uh, positions where like, he isn't just saying that, you know, God isn't real. He's also saying these God claims are harmful. They're corrosive to society. They're corrosive to the mind. Uh, and they're pretty shitty as well. And that's, that's exactly how I feel. So, like, um, he didn't say a lot of things that I didn't super, that I didn't agree with. There for surely were a few of them. But, like, uh, I give him a listen. He was a really, really cool guy. Um, and he wrote a lot of great books, too. God is Not Great, How Religion Poisons Everything. It's a fascinating book. It's a very, very well-studied book. And, and then just one thing, since you're talking about biology, I, I, I look at Aaron Ra. Aaron Ra, yeah. A, an atheist. That, Aaron Ra. Yeah, yeah. He's a, I believe he, he's a, a, an anthropologist as well. He studied bioanthropology. Would you say his work is credible? Yeah, I, I've yet to hear anything bad about him. I haven't watched very much of his stuff myself, but what I've seen has been impressive, and I'm pretty sure he actually has a degree in anthropology as well, if I remember right. Super so, nice guy, I'll say that much. Yeah, he seems really nice. I've yet to meet him, but he seems extraordinarily kind. So, like, that's, yeah. Um, I've yet to hear anything bad about him, and from what I've seen of him myself, he seems pretty cool. So, yeah, I would, I would check him out as well. Also, you know, this guy has a YouTube right. channel, too, if you're in <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. I appreciate it. I'll, I'll actually I'll get sapiens and yeah. go through it, and then... Uh, if I have any questions, I'll come back on and ask you guys. By all awesome. means. Hope to. 
All right, Barry, you're awesome. Thank you so much for the call. I really appreciate it. Uh, by the way, really quickly before we move on, as I was moving between that and the other thing, I actually got the freaking screen to load. <laughs> uh, so in pursuant to the last call, uh, genetics, a conceptual uh, approach uh, uh, by Benjamin Pierce. Um, and here in chapter 4.1, uh, I'm just going to read this directly from the text. Gender is not the same as sex. Biological sex refers to the anatomical and physiological phenotype of an individual. Gender is a category as signed by the individual or others based on behavior and cultural practices. One's gender need not coincide with one's biological sex. That is from a undergraduate college level genetics textbook. Happens to be the seventh edition. I studied out of the sixth edition uh, <laughs> when I was in college, but that was all that part's also in there. And then the rest of this chapter is all about how sexual differentiation works and how it isn't nearly as simple as you're either XX or XY as lots of people like to scream at me uh, because that's what they learned in middle school and that's when they stopped learning biology. So, Because they haven't gotten a chapter four in the introductory textbooks <laughs> of, from of the very this, first college course. This is yeah. literally basic biology. Y you don't all. need to believe us. We just ask that you try to understand just the evidence read a and then we can book. talk exactly. about it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, really quickly, we got another thing uh, before we move on. We have a brand new store. You can visit tiny.cc slash merchaca to get your favorite items like T-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, and check out our brand new items like beanies, cell phone cases, and tote bags. Uh, we even now feature a special limited edition item every single month. So buy something every month. Do it. Uh, be sure to check out our store, see all the cool things from all the cool shows. Uh, right below the chat, you'll also notice that there's a Donate Now box. Donations made there, uh, made there mean that the ACA gets 100% of the proceeds. YouTube does not take a cut. So if you want to give us money and not get a beanie, that's also an option. Um, and finally, we want to send a big thank you to the crew who puts the show together every week. Put the crew up there. Look at them. Oh, the crew. Love the crew. Ah, oh, they're all beautiful. Uh, and also, just so you know, the ACA actually hosts several shows other than just the Atheist Experience, which I know is kind of the best one, in my opinion. But there is the nonprofits, there's Secular Sexuality, which is the other best one. Uh, there's Truth Wanted, uh, which is a, also a really good one. And then there's Talk <laughs> Ethan, which is probably also the all best right, one. All right, sneaking it all uh, in. Fine. <laughs> there's, uh, and if you didn't catch all the shows last week, here's a taste of what you missed. <laughs> mean by this term alpha male the term is misappropriated from wolves having uh, an alpha male in the pack which it turns out is not true but even so people aren't wolves so it wouldn't really have mattered. science checks out yeah and they have this idea in the metaphysical market right now that if you have a piece of shungite and you put it by your computer it'll suck up all the emf waves so it doesn't affect your health <laughs> Faith is not a reliable pathway to truth, and we can f a lot of stuff up relying on faith. Oh, trust. If somebody quotes to me a Hebrews 1 11, uh, 11 1, one more time, mm -hmm. I swear Come I on. will stab myself in the right eye. We're not, we're not focusing in this conversation about the politics or the emotions or the, or the philosophical ramifications of transgender people in sports. We're actually talking about the science. Even if you could prove it to me, I would be the first one to say you're right, and I would no longer be an atheist, but I would still be right here on the show telling everybody that that God is not worthy of worship. The God of the Bible, the God of the Quran, the God of these religions is a monster. And if he's real, I am his enemy. That sure was a thing that we just watched. Now we're going to move <laughs> on to uh, Eric, pronouns are he, him from Wisconsin, who says that God doesn't send people to hell. They send themselves. Eric, how are you doing today? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey, so do you want to elaborate on that a little bit, that, that, that we send ourselves to hell? Um. Yeah, sure. Um. I just got a question real quick. Yeah. Um. If it's a choice... If you got a choice between a reward and a punishment, it's still a choice, right? I mean, I mean, it, <laughs> it depends. Uh, yeah. So, like, are you How saying much free like, will? Just, if if are you saying that just if someone's like, hey, I'm either gonna give you a piece of candy or I'm gonna slap you in the face, which one do you want? Or do you mean like, if right. you do this thing, I will either reward you, or if you do that thing, I'll punish you? What do you mean? Well, I mean, basically, the first one and the second one. 
Yeah. Well, that's well the, see, there's the problem, right? Yeah, the, the we need to separate is, that out. Yeah, if, if I offer you either a piece of candy or a slap in the face, that's that's just an honest choice to, like, which one do you like? But if I tell you, if you, you know, go pick up that car, I'll give you a piece of candy, and if you don't, I'll slap you in the face, I can say you made the choice not to lift the car, but at the end of the day, it's not really a choice, is it? So, like, what exactly do you mean that's by not that? not a choice. Telling someone to do something is not a choice. I agree with that. Yep. We've established that. So cool. where does this go? Well, then basically you're choosing to get whether you spend eternity in hell or heaven. Well, I thought you just said that telling somebody to do something isn't a choice. So if God tells me, believe in me, do these things, follow my rules, all this stuff, or you go to hell, you just said that's not a right, choice. That's a choice. That is a choice. The choice that we're being forced to make that we just established in the previous example is not how choice works. Because God's not demanding you do. You I'm not uh, demanding that you lift a car. I mean, who, I'm saying if you don't lift is? a car, I'm going to slap you. That's all. Like If God is not the one demanding that we worship him in order to avoid hell, then what force or power beyond God that God cannot control or prevent is sending us to hell. If we're going to hell because we're sinful, who is sending us there? Yourself. Hmm? Oh, I don't want to go. <laughs> um, is, is that it? Yeah. Is that the whole thing? That's not how it works. Hmm? If God sends me to hell, I will not go. What's the worst he can do? Send me to hell. Like, uh, you know? Is it, that, you're, that's choosing the, your, you're choosing yourself to go there by not accepting Jesus. And you're choosing to get slapped in the face by not lifting a car. Does that make sense? I'm choosing to what? What did you say? Just like we said at the beginning, I, t I said, if I tell you to go lift a car over your head, and if you do it, I'll give you candy, and if you don't, I'll slap you in the face. Is it a choice to get slapped if you don't lift the car? Or are you just going to say, I'm not going to do that? Why is that? You said yourself that's not a choice. That's a crazy, weird thing, right? So if God says, worship me and follow me and all these things, or I'll send you to hell, that's not a choice. That's a threat. And for you to say that I'm sending myself by not accepting this magical offer, like that doesn't really make any sense. That's not a threat because you have your whole entire life or whatever you have your the whole, whole life, life to, lift to live car. yeah to live under the threat of, of being sent to hell worship yeah. god or else you have the whole life to lift the car and i'm gonna slap you if you don't isn't that still a threat no is that a choice <laughs> is the better question is it a choice for you to get slapped because you didn't lift a car if someone it's to, if someone's telling you to lift the car or else i'll slap you and you lift the car and you still get slapped, that's, that was not a choice. And it wouldn't be a choice. That's exactly right, but that's not what we're talking about. You're saying that if I follow this God, I won't go to hell, but if I don't follow him, I will. Yeah. So, again, that's an ultimatum. It's not a choice on my All part. All I do is love Jesus. I have a question okay, for you. Okay, so Let's you can say it's an easy choice. I, I, I feel like I want to break down the argument because yeah. you're not really seeming to follow the logical principles we're establishing. You might say that it's an easy choice to worship God. I would disagree. Yeah. But, okay, to, if that is maybe where the confusion is because you're like, come on, guys, all you got to do is say some words and then the whole hell problem goes away, then we're still not really talking about a choice. We're yeah. not talking about, like, a free decision. Right, but you still got a choice. Right, you, you've got a it's choice. It's just not one made so, freely. It's one made under duress and threat of eternal damnation. It's the worst possible threat you could ever, ever receive, except it's not real, so we turn it up times infinity mm -hmm. using magical thinking. It's the scariest possible conceptualization. It's the worst threat anybody could actually imagine, by mm -hmm. definition. So, yeah, it's a threat. It's a threat. It's a choice. Okay, if I rob a bank I mean, and I put a gun up to somebody's head and say, give me the money in the register, don't. yes, they have a choice I mean, to not give me the money. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that's not a choice that's freely made, is it? It's a choice whether you accept Jesus or not. I'm, I'm okay, asking you I a wish different Jesus question. would take the gun away from my head before asking me to make that choice. It's exactly right. Like, if, like I just said a second ago, I don't know if you heard him because you were talking. If I rob a bank and I put a gun up to somebody's head and I say, give me the money in the register, they have a choice to not give me the money. But that's not really a free choice, right? They're going to give me the money because they don't want to get shot. 
So if you're telling me, make this choice this way, and if you don't, I'll torture you for all eternity, yeah, technically I could choose to not do it still, but that's still a choice that's not being made freely. That's still a threat looming over me. No, that's a free choice because you know the consequences. Right, and it's still a crappy consequence. You get that, right? Let me, let me ask you another question. Just, just, just try something different because this doesn't seem to be going anywhere, but I, I think we can try something else that's a little bit different. Um, does anything happen ever at all that's outside of God's control? Does anything happen outside of God's control? Yeah. Does that do? Can can I possibly do something that God doesn't want me to do? That God wishes didn't ever happen? Can I go against no, God's will? Because you got you got free will. Right. No. Well, that's what I'm asking. Does, does anything in the universe? Does anything happen that God doesn't have control over? Or that doesn't that God doesn't want to happen? Can anything violate God's will? Well, I think that God already know already knows what's going to happen, mm -hmm. but. Like us humans, you know, we got free will. So, like, before we do something, God already knows we're going to do it. Right, but I'm asking you, can I do something that God doesn't want? What's the nature of that free will? No, you, no. People do stuff that God don't want them to do every day. Okay, so, but he does know what's going to happen already. He knows the outcome. I believe so, yeah. Okay, so then here, here's the, a, a follow-up question then. Um I'm an atheist. I'm a very outspoken atheist. I, I make it a part of my life's mission to help other people also free themselves and become atheists as well. So I'm a pretty bad guy in this God's eyes, right? If I were to die right now, I'm definitely going to hell. And even if something happens later on, like the change of my mind, there have been other atheists that are similar to me that are you know, certainly by these rules in hell right now. God knew what was going to happen with them. God, from the moment before they were even born, God knew who they were going to turn out to be, what they were going to do with their lives, all these things. So the purpose of their life was to go to hell. God made them knowing that they would go to hell, and that's fine with him. Why? How is that a choice? God didn't make them to go to hell. But they didn't have a choice. Choosing themselves, they do have a choice. But God already knew the outcome, and he still made them. God has a choice too, right? For sure. If God knows if I make this person, he's going to go to hell, he could just not make that person. Or he could change the circumstances around them, make sure they have a better preacher, make their better parent, something like that. Meet make, them in Damascus. Like, yeah, show yeah. up. Make the right books, something. Help me find my car keys in the morning, something. Like, he could do Wait, all these things. You're saying about God, not God creating you. That just shows how much God loves you. He made me, he loves me so much that he made me knowing that I would burn in hell for all eternity. You, you get 15 seconds or, you know, 100 years of life on earth and then eternal hellfire and yeah. damnation. That's a bitch of a deal. That's not, doesn't sound like a lot of love to me. What if I told you that I, I have a wife and I love her so much that if she didn't love me back, I would lock her in my garage and set her on fire. Would that be a love? Would but that like be a choice? For eternity. Would that be a choice that she's making to, to love me so that she doesn't get set on fire? And would I be a loving husband because I was willing to burn her in my garage? Is that a choice you made? Yeah, that would be a choice that you made. What about her? Are we back to the definition of choice? Yeah. <laughs> I Does mean, that, right, if you burn your wife, that's your choice. <laughs> Right, but that's what I'm asking you. If I tell my wife, if you don't love me, I'm going to set you on fire, does she have a choice? And also, am I a loving, good husband? Those are two questions well, I want you to answer. If you, if you set her on fire, then you never loved her to begin with. And if God sends us to hell, he never loved us to begin with. Wrong. <laughs> Okay, so let me ask you a question. God does love you. Let me ask you a question, Eric, and this is a genuine question. Just yes or no, this is not a gotcha. I just genuinely want to know. Do you have anyone in your life that you genuinely love with all your heart? Yeah. What, per what would that person have to do for you to condone them being tortured for all eternity? What would that person have to do? What yeah. choice would they have to make? What choices would that person have to make for you to be like, you know what, the best thing could happen right now is that you get tortured forever. That would be a really good thing. What would cause you to make that choice, that decision? Nothing. Yeah, me too. You might be moral, more moral than God. It sounds like you are. It sounds like you're a lot of a better person than God is because there's not a single thing my wife could possibly do that would make me want her to be hurt. So... 
if God is like, hey, you know what? At the end of the day, the best thing that could happen is that you go to the lake of fire. That doesn't sound like love to me. It is love because you got a choice. Yeah, and, and hey, man, that person that you love in your life, they made a choice too. Is there any choice that they could make? You a choice. Is there any choice that a person that you love could make that would make you think that they should be tortured? Any choice at all that they could make that would make you think it's a good thing for them to go to hell? Um... I can't think of any right now. But I, I couldn't either. Like I said before. I couldn't either. And that's the thing. Their, it's their choice. Huh? As you said, as you said, God already knows what's going to happen. God's in charge of all of it. God made hell, right? He's established this moral system. Right, but he, he is the judge of who goes to hell and who doesn't. Whether we make the choices or not, it's his rules that we're playing by. So what you're saying is he loves us conditionally. He loves us so much that if we make the wrong choices, he thinks it's a good idea for us to be tortured forever. And you also said that you couldn't imagine a single reason to torture anybody that you love. And I agree with you there. There's not a single thing that somebody could do that I would say you should be tortured, no matter who they are, whether I love them or not, but especially if I love them. I think it would be really gross if I were to tell my wife, I love you so much, but if you did this thing, I think it would be really good that you got tortured. That'd be, that'd be pretty awful. It's totally different. Why? It's because it's eternity. Yeah, if I told that my wife you should be so tortured much for eternity, that is different. It's exponentially more horrible. It's more horrible to go to heaven than hell? In my opinion, they're both awful, but that's not what we're talking about. See, you're making a choice, right? I mean, you could right now accept Jesus in your heart, but you're choosing not to. Yes, right? because yep. any Actively, God... Actively, angrily. Yes. I am making that choice because any God that would set up a system like that is evil. Any God that would have a system like that, where you burn an eternity because you didn't like them, is a monster, is an egotistical maniac. And why on earth would I worship somebody like that? Because he loves you and he gives you, and he gave you life. I encourage you to there look up the definition love of love. <laughs> That's fair to say, but just because somebody loves you does not mean that they're going to treat you right. And if somebody does love you, they probably wouldn't torture you. Well, God doesn't torture you. The, demon, the demons in hell... That God created yeah, that in the God system created. that he established, that he has control over. Unless he's not all-powerful, but I don't think you want to pull on that but thread. I know God... God does, I think God does see what we're going to do in the future. But see, us as humans, we don't know what path we're going to take in the future. You know what I mean? We're just going along as we go. Which means that God right. made us for the intent purpose of going to hell. If I knew what was going to happen in the outcome, Wrong. then me setting that outcome going is on purpose. Um, if I fire a gun at somebody, if I fire a gun at somebody, I know that the outcome is going to be that they die. So I did this. And I know that somebody's going to die over there. I know the outcome. If God makes me into a person knowing that I am going to go to hell, then he did it on purpose. He sent me to hell on purpose. They could have made the choice to duck. Send yourself to hell. It's, it, and when we're right back I, I, at the I beginning. Think, I think we're in circles. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and just watch this video when it comes out on loop, and I think you may experience a little bit of what we're feeling now. Yeah. I understand that this is tricky material. It's very emotionally fraught, but if you try to think through piece by piece and follow the logic and the reason rather than the emotion, I, I think that you'll start to see where we're coming from here. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go and move on, Eric. Thank you so much for calling in. Um, we appreciate you giving you know your your thoughts, uh, but hey, I've got to let everybody know out there in the in the in the in the audience world uh, that if you can arrange to be in the Austin area between December 16th and uh, to the 18th, consider joining us in the studio right here where I am right now. Uh, you can be in the studio audience. Go show the studio audience. Look at them; they're out there. 
be in the studio audience. <laughs> oh, see, they've got the they've got the card up there, and they have to leave. Well, uh, let me tell. We'll show them later. <laughs> Cheer again in a minute. Oh, there they are hey in the darkness. <laughs> uh, if you can join us here in the at uh, the ACA Free Thought Library for a live broadcast of Secular Sexuality, Truth, One, and Talk, Heathen, and the Atheist Experience, those are all my favorite shows. Uh, and, and in that order, um, uh, doors <laughs> open <laughs> at 6 p.m. Uh, Thursday and Friday at uh, and at noon on Sunday. Parking is where you can find a legal spot. After the lot is full. Um, if you can't make it there this month, we can continue to broadcast live from the library the last week of every single month. Uh, so keep watching the show and go to our website, atheist-community.org, for news and information as we expand and our in-studio offerings in the future. I'm freaking excited to be here in the studio. These earbuds have penetrated the ear canals of so right? many great men and women. <laughs> now here they are with me. What an honor. Uh, with that, we have like packed lines, and I want to get as many people as I can in. Sure, We've only got a little bit of time, in. but I'm looking at this guy. Uh, yeah, uh, eight. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. So we're looking at. I'm probably going to sound say this wrong. It's it's looks like Nicole. Uh, pronouns he him from Armenia. Um, says wants to know: Is the Bible really a reliable guidance for marriage and relationships? Am I saying your name right, Nicole? And if I am, how are you? Hi, yes, my name is Nicole, yeah. Awesome, perfect. I just want to make sure I'm not saying that wrong because it's spelled a little bit differently than I'm used to. Um, so, yeah, do you want to elaborate any on that, or is that a pretty good summary? Just is the Bible a good uh, relationship guide? Well, uh, yeah, I wanted to explain it a little bit. Yeah. See, um, I think uh, I was watching one of your uh, episodes where you were talking about, uh, like, relationships and marriage and i was thinking that time that uh as to me like marriage as we know it it like basically it's based on the bible and it doesn't work outside the bible i mean i see people for example being non-religious and getting divorced more frequently than people who are i would say like devout christians and I'm talking about Christianity since I kind of try to follow this religion and not other religions. Yeah, I, I'm not sure that the outcome data really reflects that. Uh, but let's start with that assumption that more uh, religious folks stay married and start asking ourselves why, right? Like, is staying married the goal of marriage? Do you get into a marriage exclusively or explicitly because you want it to last forever? Or is it because you want a companionate, loving relationship with somebody that you deeply care about that you hope to be with for the rest of your life? Whether or not religious uh, marriages last longer doesn't make them superior. And I, I think if we start to scratch the surface a little bit, we'll see that that's not even the reality in the first place. Mm -hmm. Also, I should point out that uh, I just pulled this up. I just Googled, you know, divorce rates between religious and non-religious people. Um, and I found a study here that is cited on this news website. Uh, it's from, from news24.com. Um, and they just put the, the blurb here. Um, uh, evangelical Christians actually have 26%. Uh, um, Non-evangelical born-again Christians is 33%. Atheist and agnostic is 30%. So... Christians actually have a higher divorce rate than, than atheists do. Well, uh, probably I was uh, talking about my personal experience and experience of people I know that would probably use the passages from the New Testament, for example, where it explicitly says about like divorce being a sin and but, you know, I, yeah. if you tell people that they're going to go to hell for doing something, they're going to be a lot less likely to do it, which mm -hmm. means less divorce. So, yay, hooray. But is that really a win? Yeah, Catholics are against divorce and Catholics only have a 28 percent divorce rate. So they they're a little bit below atheists. Um, but, uh, you know, non-evangelical born again Christians jump up to 33 percent because divorce is not taboo in their culture. So religion has nothing to do with it, aside from the fact that. Like, like, like Christian religion just says, influences culture. You're, you're you're taught that this is a bad thing, a wrong thing, so or that you're going to be punished for it. So yeah, you don't do it. I don't think that that means that it's good. I think that you're just explaining how indoctrination works. Yeah, I mean, if you follow it like word by word and not just like choose the passages that you like, I think, and now you have to really uh, like if you choose a person to live with 
then you can't divorce unless they commit adultery. And I think, for example, I have some crisis in my life too because when I was like, um, I was thinking that you know, I didn't question my religion at all. And once I got married, uh, later on, like after a few years, I started thinking like, what if, like I wasn't a Christian anymore, then would it be okay for me to just, you know, like um, divorce a person? Or maybe I was married because of like this doctrine in the first place, and I'm a little bit confused. So I was thinking, I wanted to ask you, as I understand you're atheists, mm -hmm. what do you think about marriage? You think it's something that uh, didn't exist before, like uh, religion, or you think it's a good thing in general? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, human culture is, is, you know, most human cultures throughout history have been polygamous, but most human relationships throughout history have been more or less monogamous, if not serially monogamous, meaning that you have one partner at a time, even if you have multiple partners throughout your life. Um, uh, it, it is something that predates religion by a lot, even if we don't have like this whole ceremonial, you know, of, of, or legal or whatever like that, the concept of two human beings deciding to live together because they like each other is a pretty old thing. Um, and it's changed a lot over the course of culture. There was a long time, and it still is this way in a lot of cultures, where marriage is more of an economic arrangement, um, where it's more of a, a family bonding, you're bringing two groups together, where it's more of a trade for resources, you know, look at, look at dowry laws in certain places. Like there's there's a lot there. There's a lot to say about like what val uh, what cultures value women or men differentially and how marriage plays out in that way. So like yeah, this goes way past the Bible. Um, and insofar as like what I think about it, I think it's the same thing as any other relationship. Um, if you want to do it, do it. And when you want to stop doing it, stop doing it. Because if you love somebody, you should want them to be happy and how horribly miserable to be trapped in a relationship with someone who doesn't want to be with you or that you don't want to be with them. Divorce is a fantastic thing uh, because that means that at least one of the parties doesn't want to be there anymore. So they should be free to not do that. Congratulations. Go have a fun life somewhere else. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all for that. If you want to do it, do it. If you don't want to be together, you shouldn't have to be. Well, and ultimately, for all of the history, for all of the different cultural influences, for all of the things that, quote, make up marriage, nobody gets to define that, mm -hmm. right? Like, no church doctrine, no ancient religious poetry. Uh, marriage is a contract between two people, and contracts need to be negotiated and renegotiated. So that bond that you're creating is whatever you say it is, whether that includes, uh, you know, economic sharing or whether that includes, like, division of labor or whether that includes monogamy or family commitments, paternity, all of those things are options that are not mandatory. And so what we think about marriage, it's not really about that. It's about what do you and the person that you are married to or proposing marriage to want out of that relationship? And what does that contract look like? And should there be a sunset clause? Like, what does divorce mean to you? Well, what does marriage mean to you? This is all personal and individual stuff. And I think it's important when we talk about divorce rates and how to stay in a marriage and, and all of these things that we are not seeing, like, being in a marriage and staying in a marriage as the singular goal. It's a, it's a means to an end, and these relationships are relationships that we choose on purpose. Okay, and how do you look at the terms like adultery, like without religion, you think it is a thing or is something that people like made up? It's, it's, I mean, it's an adjective, yeah. but like what is it actually? Yeah. It's, it's a thing if you, if, you're, if you care about it. Like my wife and I are monogamous. We, we don't want to be with any other people. If I go out and cheat on her, that would be a problem. We're both atheists. It's because those are the rules of our marriage. We, we, you know, we have this set of rules. I'm not sleeping with anybody else. She's not sleeping with anybody else, and we're happy. And if, we, if I violate those rules, it has nothing to do with our religious beliefs because we don't have any. It's just those are the, the terms and conditions. That's that the vow. Out. That's yeah. the emotional contract that you sign when you sign that marriage license. And down the line, if we want to change that or any other part of our relationship, 
we have the freedom to change it if we want to. If we decide that, you know, I really just want her to be a stay-at-home creature and just, just cook me dinner every night. If she's into that, radical. If I decide that I really want us to go, you know, be adventuresome and, and, and go out and, and, and screw everybody. If she's into that, radical. We'll do that. It, it, it doesn't matter as long as it's something that we both agree on and we're both happy with, then that's what we're going to do. And if we decide later on down the line that marriage just isn't as fun as we thought and we want to go back to just dating, it would change nothing but paperwork legally. We'd still do that. But that's a thing that we're free to do. And if we decide we don't want to be together at all, that's a thing that we're free to do. It's That's just it, man. Life's all about freedom and relationships are a part of that. As long as the person or persons that you're with are cool with it, have fun. But uh, like uh, men and women generally, as I view, they are different. Like, I mean, what I mean by different is, you know, what I observe, right? Maybe it's something that we acquire in our life or maybe it's our nature, you know, like because, for example, where I live, uh, I mean, in my family, we don't believe in, you know, I would say like equality, right? Like they say like man is more like logically thinking and women they make decisions based on emotions and i can't really understand that but i think it has some has to do with our nature more than what we believe or or maybe some of those ideas have to do with your culture and your beliefs rather than reality and science uh, I, I just have to kind of throw that in there because I get real squeamish when people start saying, you know, uh, men be like this and women be like this because it's just cultural bullshit. I mean, yeah. it's hacky 90s stand up more than anything, and it's just not grounded in reality. There's also strong actual scientific evidence against what you just said. Like there, there's there's no actual evidence that women think this way and men think that way. Uh, like we talked about a little while ago, you know, I can, I can pull up the genetics textbook again, or, or I can pull up another textbook if you like. Gender and sex are different things, and gender comes down to cultural norms. Gender is a person's expression of who they are and what their, their sexual role in their society is. It's the society's uh, expectations of that person. Like, it has nothing to do with any, like, immutable reality about who they are as a person. It's just what they feel about themselves and what the society tells them to do and that's what it is it's a cultural structure so if your culture is that way that sucks uh but it doesn't change who women are or who men are um humans are much more diverse and interesting than that well maybe not like genders maybe i mean like maybe it's like male and female where male is more like a leader you know like this notion and female she like follows him and the same thing you can also find in the scripture where it says that man is like the head for like right it, it, yeah. that that's all still just culture that's you just, write it down in your scripture right and then exactly. it, tell it to millions of people and then have them act that way have them uh, like socially punish and shun mm -hmm. and outcast people who don't act that way and pretty soon you'll see millions of people acting that way and go where, where did this come from if you tell a kid that the moon is made of cheese and you take him to a building every single week where they all sing songs about how the moon's made of cheese and you tell them that only bad people don't believe the moon's made of cheese and if they don't believe the moon's made of cheese then they're going to go to a, a fondue pot in the sky where they're going to burn for eternity they're going to end up believing in the moon made of cheese man that's the thing is you can put anything you want in a book and like christy said you teach it to a million people they're gonna roll with it so what you're describing over and over here is just culture and cultures change generation to generation they change the scripture doesn't change well the scriptures changed a lot but it, you know, that may be something <laughs> you can point to as being kind of unchanging but even then the same Bible says that if you rape a virgin, you can pay your dad like you know, however many silver pieces and then she's your property and your wife. That's not a good thing. Why don't you have a cultural belief based around that? Because you can all see how shitty that is. You just ignore that part. The Bible also says that if two men are fighting and they're in a struggle with each other and a woman tries to break them up and accidentally touches one of their penises, you have to cut her hand off. Do you follow that rule in your culture? I'm slapping the crap out of my microphone today. It's right in front of my stupid face and I hate it. Um, like, why don't you follow that rule in the book, right? These are just cultural practices that have been passed down for several generations and can change at any time and should Okay, and you think, uh, like, okay, let's not talk about the scripture. I mean, like, generally, like, if we take, like, bio biology, right? I mean, maybe it's something that is 
in us, like, like since the prehistoric times, you know, like... Um, I mean, it would make yeah. sense if we could find it, if we saw it, if there was evidence for it. But, but there's, not. there's just not. There's study after study after study that in the face of cultural expectations proves consistently that, you know, women and men are just as good at math and logic and all of these different things driving, like all of these ridiculous stereotypes that we like to throw at people are just culturally made up. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, you can look at a species that is strongly sexually dimorphic. Like, look at gorillas. Like, gorillas, you can just look at their skulls. And if you know, like, the, you know, two things about biology, you can tell a million things about who they are as a species and how they behave and how they raise children and what they, how they, you know, what kind of sexual selection situation they have going on. Like, because male gorillas have this massive skull with a huge sagittal crest and great big teeth and the females are a little bit more gracile. And so you now know a huge amount about this tournament species and how long the males live compared to the females and how crappy of dads the, uh, the males are going to be compared to the females. And then compare that to another species of primates like bonobos that are way less sexually dimorphic. And sure enough, you know, they are much more gentle, chill creatures. They're also matriarchal, which is radical. So, like, you've got, like this dimorphism here that you can point to and you can say, yeah, this species has males that do this and females that do that. And this species is a little bit less and so they're pretty much equal. And it turns out humans fall right in the middle of the spectrum. We are a little sexually dimorphic, but we're not that sexually dimorphic. And we're certainly not dimorphic to the point where you have predictable behaviors or practices or like whatever from, you know, whatever sex that just doesn't track. And then you have, like you saw in the in the mid roll ad, which I hope people saw, um, is that, you know you talk about like the whole alpha male thing, which is really popular in our society now. That's bullshit science that was disproven. That also is being misinterpreted yeah. about like, oh well, in wolves they do these things, so humans do these things too, and it's just nonsense. It's not how anything works. So the data just aren't there to back up these assertions. And to say that, you know, uh, men and women have different roles biologically is, is to be ignorant of biology. But uh, would you say that animals, they also have some sort of, you know, things that they need to, like, figure out through failures like we do, for example, let's say 500 years ago, something was okay, now it's not okay. But for anim animals, it seems like, at least from, from a side, that everything goes like it was before. I mean, they don't change their behavior. Do animals have culture? Do they pass yeah. knowledge and information down generation to generation? That's some, kind of the question. Yeah. From, S some animals do. The idea. Yeah. Yeah. So, some animals have, have generational knowledge like that. To call it culture is a bit of a stretch, although there are some good studies that you could make a strong argument. Um, you know, Robert Sapolsky's famous uh, studies about uh, uh, um, baboons, when all the, the big, strong, because baboons are very dimorphic, the males lead the pack, um, and they're very mean and aggressive, and uh, the a troop of baboons that he was studying got into a dumpster full of meat that was infected with tuberculosis. The big, strong males, being the big, strong males, got to eat first, and they all died of tuberculosis. And then you add a new troop that was 50% more females than males, and the males that were left were the ones that weren't big, tough, mean ones, but they were actually, like, the ones that kind of socialized and spent more time grooming each other and stuff. And you would expect those males to then become the big, mean, dominant ones, but they didn't. They just kept on keeping on as loving families and being chill and stress levels went way down in their, and, you know, the, the hormones in their brains, the stress hormones went way down. And when new males came to try to join the pack and be all tough and aggressive, they'd all beat the hell out of them and say, we don't do that shit here. <laughs> and that lasted for about as long as the lifespan of the troop. So there are certain instances where you can point to what you could arguably call a culture. But the difference is... Humans are unique in the animal kingdom and that we are the only animal that can tell you what it means to be a human. We can give you great details about how we feel in any one situation. Most animal quote quote language boils down to I'm happy, I'm horny, I'm hungry, I'm scared, I'm mad. Humans can go into a lot of detail about I want to be this way in my society. So yeah, it makes sense to look at other animals when it comes to understanding bioanthropology. That, that's a cornerstone of bioanthropology. But also, if we're going to talk about human development and human populations, if we're going to talk about rights and equality, whether it be about you know, men and women or LGBT people or whatever, it makes a lot more sense just to listen to those people 
and hear what they say and what they think and what they have to feel about it. That's a lot of a better, in my opinion, a lot better way forward. So maybe ask the women, you know, do you like the idea of being seen as a follower, as property, as just something that's totally emotional and can't make decisions and can't run a business and can't do math? I bet they disagree. Well, yeah, I mean, they would disagree, but sometimes, you know, for example, you can see a woman that lives with an abusive man and you can tell her she, you can leave her and she says, I can't leave him because I have feelings and you can't really explain why she's doing that, you know. And there are Lots just as many examples of men being in abusive relationships saying the exact same thing. So or you're talking millions of people being in abusive religions. Ex absolutely. So. Yeah, that is a stereotype that you can point to. And if you look into psychology, you'd be way more qualified to talk about this than me. But like, mm. if I remember the numbers, it's something like there has to be like seven different interventions statistically between like there's... A it's something in that direction. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it takes a lot for somebody to get out of an abusive relationship, whether it is with a domestic partner or with a, you know, all loving God. Mm -hmm. There's so much manipulation that goes into that situation, but... I want to zoom out a little bit and say that you are using like this hypothetical example, not data, yeah. right? And, and that's really what this women be this way, men be that way kind of conversation needs to is large outcome data looking at m thousands and thousands, if not millions of people to consider what those differences might actually be. I mean, existentially, we are not identical. There is a tiny amount of dimorphism. But those differences between men and between women are very, very slim. And within group differences are going to be greater than without group differences. And I think that's something to lock in on to here. Because even if we show that women are somewhat more statistically likely to be that way or this way or whatever else, any individual woman is basically just as likely as any individual man on any of these categories. So we can't tell a man or a woman that you're this way or you're that way because of the category that you're in, because those within group differences are huge. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your answers. Thank you. Hey, no worries. Thank you so much for calling in, Nicole. You're awesome. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to us. I know we rambled quite a bit, but those are some important stuff that you talked about there. Um, with that, we're, we're coming real close to the top mm -hmm. of the hour. Uh, I don't know if we have time to squeeze any more into you. I don't know. It might be tight. We can put the, the clock up if we need to. Okay, I'm going to go for this one right here. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I'm guessing, Te Teo from, from Croatia? Actually, yes. Teo from Croatia. Uh, does God exist? What about evolution? Just wants to talk about it. Am I saying that right? Is that Teo? Yeah, it's Teo. Teo, awesome. I'm, I'm separating when I shouldn't have been. So we have like four minutes left in this show. Um, and you want to know if God and evolution and stuff exists. Can you give us like, we're going to go lightning speed around here. What's your specific question that you have? Yeah, hi guys, how you doing? Like, uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about Bible because I'm from Croatia and my country is very religious. Mm -hmm. There's like 85% people, Catholic people live here and I never read the Bible and I'm never planning to. For me, that's some shitty book and I never believe in shitty things that thing in the Bible. You're the best caller we've had all day. Go on. <laughs> As soon as I mentioned people here, and when I used to live in America, I noticed that. As soon as I mentioned people that I never read the Bible and I never planning to have, they kind of judge you right away, and that kind of bothers me a lot, you know? Yeah. Those people who pretend they're religious, they're religious, and they believe in God. You can see them every Sunday in the church. They are the first one who's going to judge you and who's going to look at you wrong way because you didn't read the Bible, or I don't know, you don't, you don't agree with their opinions about God and religion, and I'm sick and tired of that. But yeah. Jesus loves you. But Jesus loves you, right? Exactly. Yeah, no, I, I have read... I've I haven't read the whole Bible cover to cover. I've read most of it. Uh, my wife actually went to Bible college, so she's read it a lot. And uh, <laughs> it's it's funny how like when we talk to you know religious people, we tend to know the Bible a lot better than them, and and, and it, they tend to ignore all the parts that they don't like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my my parents were like uh, raised me and my twin brother as a Catholics, but I never as soon as I how I grew up. I noticed there's a, like a bunch of holes in religions, in like, every religion, not just Catholic religion. There's a, like a lot of mistakes, and of course, you become like a grown, you grown up, and you become aware of the things like how reality, you know, and you see what 
things are wrong, what things sound right. So of course, like today, I even wonder, ask myself, does even God exist? You know, because all of that God exists, all of that crap. You know, I don't believe in that anymore. So yeah, it, it's it's glad you're asking the question. Yeah, it's just um, and like we said before, for us, it's just a matter of evidence. I have no reason to think that there is a God. I have no evidence for it. That's the end of the conversation for me. But if you want to go on, I also have no need for a God. It doesn't make my life any better. It certainly it would certainly make it worse, in my opinion. Um, and furthermore, I have no want, no desire for a god. The gods on offer sound hideous. And the idea of having an eternal parent watching over me, judging everything I do, judging everything I think, judging everything that I sleep and what I think of my dreams and things, and can torture me for all eternity, I, I do not like dictatorships, so thank you, but no. That's a, such a crap because, like, uh, I'm not saying that it's a crap what you're saying. I'm saying it's a crap about God. Yeah. Because if God exists, why? Right? Okay. Why he would he he make us like on this world? Uh, he gave us a life, and he make us as a sinners. So how, why he would do that? And on the end of our life, he would judge us because of that. That doesn't make any sense at all. Oh, but but didn't you hear the last guy who said that we send ourselves <laughs> to hell? <laughs> Yeah, that's such a crap. I, I couldn't even listen to him. I was so furious and mad. Oh my god! And then when you when you prove them you're right and they see they're wrong, they're gonna come back on the simple bullshit. God loves you. God, exactly. <laughs> oh. You're my best friend today, Teo. Yeah, yeah. You looking for a co-hosting gig? Maybe you know we're <laughs> always looking for Austin? volunteers. <laughs> TV at atheist community right. org. Oh well, this is fantastic. You know, I, 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 we totally agree with what you're saying. Or at least I can say I do. It, it's a, uh, you know, it's a crappy double-edged sword. This thing. It's, uh, but, um, yeah. That's that's what we do. That's why we do what we do. We're trying to make the world a little bit of a better place, and that means less religious, in my opinion. Uh, by the way, I want to ask you guys, what are your names? My name's Forrest. Howdy, I'm Christy. Okay, how you doing, guys? Yeah, Forrest, I forgot your name. I wanted to tell you. I love everything you represent, how the way you like are leading the show. You are such a cool guy. Oh, my God. I love to watch an atheist experience because of you. You are a great guy, man. You, you flatter me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. No, I really mean that of you. Like, you are enjoying so much listening, the way you're talking and how you're proving people they're wrong. You are such a smart and intelligent dude. Don't, don't, at this point now, you're just trying to fluff me up. But thank you. So that, <laughs> that means the world to me sincerely. Uh, cue the hate comments telling you why you're wrong. Right. Uh, I'll be one of them. <laughs> you're going to get shredded. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But I, uh, I'll, I'll tell you guys, he's actually like this in real life. I don't think he's ever met a person he didn't like or a textbook he didn't already memorize. <laughs> I just, I'm just happy to be here, man. <laughs> well, Teo, thank you so much. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna end the call before you compliment me anymore. I don't know if I can handle it. Uh, my head doesn't need to get any bigger. But uh, thank you so much for calling in, and thank you for everything you said. I, I really appreciate it. No problem, guys. Have a pleasant night. It was a pleasure talking to you. You too, man. Take, Take care. care. Well, this has been a phenomenal show. Uh, mm -hmm. We got a lot of fun calls, man. For sure, There's just everything in there. Um, just thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, not only to you watching us on the internet, but also to all the people in the studio here. Show the studio on just again. Hey! Look at them. There they are. Well lit and beautiful. Look how pretty they are. Oh, I like that one the most. Uh, uh, so thanks so much for being here today. Please visit our website at uh, atheist-community.org for the latest on what's been happening today. And feel free to contact us at uh, tv at atheist-community.org. Show the crew again. Show the crew again. They told me that I can say that. Show the crew again. And then they'll right. be right there with put, the button. Put, do it right Come now. on, guys. Show it to them. Show us that crew. Do it. Show Give it to crew. me. There, there's that crew. <laughs> Look at that. Look at them. Oh, they're great. It's been great being here with you today, Christy. You're one of my favorite people to get to talk to. I, fucking, I love having you. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for being on. Uh, Christy, do you have something else going on? Yeah, no, I just wanted to quickly mention uh, Secular Sexuality, Thursday Ooh. nights at 7. We've mentioned it a few times, but fantastic program. Uh, and then tomorrow, actually, if you're watching this live on uh, Monday the 21st, I'll be appearing on the Recovering from Religion podcast. So uh, a, a really great organization that we've partnered with before, and I just encourage people to check it out. I'm a huge fan of their stuff because so many people need that outreach. You know what I mean? Yeah, to, to no, no question. They offer so many incredible resources. It's huge. And so I'm freaking thrilled that you're going to be there. You'd be a huge resource for them. So thanks so much for watching. Go check out Christy's thing. Uh, uh, go watch the other shows. Have an awesome rest of your day and never stop learning. Bye-bye.
It's time to get sexy. So watch Secular Sexuality Live Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash YTSS and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash call S-E-X.